All right, so welcome back, everybody. So for this video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Meadow. Now, the way this game will end is in Meadow, you you will take six, you'll play six rounds if you're playing a two-player game. So if you're playing a two-player game, you'll play about six, six rounds, for instance. And once you've completed all six rounds, then the game will be over. Now, each round will contain five actions. So the round will be over when you have used these tokens here to take an action. Now, there are different ways of taking actions in this game as well. So all of these, where it has the numbers on them and the question mark at the top, they are only for this area here, okay? So if you, use, if you want to use these actions, they're just for this. If you want to use the bottom part of these tokens, this type of action, these icons, for instance, then they will go over here on the campfire, and you'll put them into one of these spots, for instance, okay? Now, what do these actions do? Well, one of the actions, for instance, they all have a similar icon. This one, this one, this one. These all have the same icon. So if I was to put this, for instance, right here, then I would take this card here because I'm only going one in this direction. That means if I wanted this card here and I didn't have the one, I could put uh, this token here and take this card, okay? So you're gonna be placing these notches, these tokens into notches based on obviously which cards you want to take and which of these you have and which of these are unoccupied by other tokens, okay? So that's how that's going to work. You're basically just drawing cards from here using those numbers. So if I was to, like, for instance, once again, place this here, I could take this card with uh, what I believe is a peccary, peccary, or, peccary animal on it, for instance. Um, that's how that's going to work. Now, these actions do different things as well. So after you, for, but first let's continue with this part. So once you've taken a card from here using these tokens at the top section of the token, once you've done that, you can play a card from your hand, whether it can be one of the cards you just took or it can be one of the cards that you already have in your hand. Now, when you play the game, you take one of these cards from the West deck. You'll take two cards from the South deck, one card from the East deck, and one card from the north deck. Now, if you look closely, we're only playing with the west deck, the south deck, and the east deck. And that's because the north deck is set aside for the first few part of, for the ha first half of the game. Once you've completed a round, you're gonna move this marker up on the stones. And when the stone goes from here to here, you pass the hourglass, and you'll discard all of the cards in the south section deck, take that out, and put this in its place, the north deck, and place out eight of these cards from the north deck. Now, honestly, the north deck is going to be obviously harder to to play the cards from the north deck because they're they're going to require more stuff, and we'll get to what that what that would entail. But one of the things I like about the north deck is the north deck will have bigger animals involved. So while there are some animals involved with the self deck, they're all small animals, very small. And so with, with the North deck, we get some of the bigger animals. So some, anyway. So that's what I really like about the North deck. The North deck's going to have more impressive animals, more well-known animals. You know, just animals that people like mostly, right? So that and other things, among other things, obviously. Okay? So... That's how that would work. You're going to take a card from here if you place these in one of these locations, and then you're going to play a card from your hand or the card you just played. Now, we'll talk about actually how playing a card will work because there are requirements when playing a card. But before we do that, let's mention how the other actions are going to work for the campfire. Oh, and let's finish. Let's talk about this one. 
So when you place this one with a question mark in any of one of the notches, like let's say if I was to place it here, I could take any card I want from this row. It doesn't have to be one, two, three, or four. It can be any of the four I want. So if I just wanted, for instance, this card here, and I had put it there, I can get it. You know, if I had placed it, for instance, here, I could just get it because it's a question mark. That's how that's going to work. Okay? Now let's talk about how these below actions are going to work. So when you place this token here with... Um, this icon here, when you place it at the campfire, what you get to do is you get to take any one card from the tableau. So you can take whatever card you want from the tableau. Does not matter, can be any one. But you're only taking one. And if you take this action here, you cannot play a card. So you won't be playing a card into your meadow for points and stuff like that. So that's the downside to using that action to get any card you want. Okay, let's talk about this one. What this one's going to let you do, if you place it at the campfire, it's going to let you draw two road tokens, okay? So it'll let you draw two of these. Now, what are these good for? Well, first of all, you always start with one road token. Road tokens allow you to play landscape cards. For instance, this card here is a landscape card. In order to play it, I need to have an unused road token that I haven't used yet. And then if I do have a road token that's not used, then I flip it to this side to indicate that I've used it for this landscape card. Okay? That's how that's going to work. Now, some of these landscape cards have other requirements rather than just the road icon necessary. But that you get that. That's what these are for. Okay? So let's get two of them. So that's how you're going to get more of them. Okay? Um, and then the third action that you can take if you put this at the campfire is you can draw three cards from one of the decks. You can draw it from the west deck or the south deck or the east deck, but you draw three cards and then you get to choose one of the three cards you drew, keeping it, and then you discard the rest to the bottom of that deck pile, whichever one it may have been. And then once again you don't get to play a card that turn. Obviously, you also don't get to play a card into your meadow if you took the two road tokens, but you also don't get to do it if you do this one too. So that's how that's going to work. Now, the best action that you could potentially take, I think is the best action you could take at the campfire, is you could instead play this one and put it over here on the campfire to allow you to play two cards into your meadow. So this one actually allows you to play two cards into your play area, into your meadow. And then this question mark allows you to take whatever action you want. So it can be the fourth one, or it can be one through three. But if it is one through three, that means you're not playing a card into the meadow. If it's the fourth one you're using with the question mark, then you can still play, obviously, two cards into your meadow because that's what the action is. So that's how the action, these action tokens are going to work and how you're going to get cards and play cards and get road tokens and, and such. Okay, so now let's talk about, obviously, oh, there's one other thing. So you can also place a token here on these benches. If you place a token on a bench, you can play a card into your meadow, but just your just one card and just into your meadow, that means that's the only action you're taking for the whole turn is just playing a card into your meadow. You're not taking cards from here. You're not acquiring these. You're just playing one card. Okay? That's how that's going to work. Okay. So, now let's talk about the cards first. There are four basic different types of cards in this game. The first type of card is the kind of card you'll start with, a ground card. And they're double-sided, so each player can choose to either play with this side or play with this side. And as you'll notice, they each have two different icons on them. There are different types of ground cards, multiple card types. And certain cards are going to require this kind of an icon, this kind of ground icon. But also, some are going to require this type of icon. So you'll play the side you want based on what you might have in your hand or what looks good in the tableau that you want to get. 
And then obviously they each have a different other icon on them as well. This one's got like a grub icon. Well, this one has sort of like a beetle icon. And obviously, once again, these are going to require either this one or obviously this one. And that's basically what you start with. But you're gonna to wanna to get other ground cards as well. When you have, this is, when, you're, when you play a card, you're gonna be playing cards on top of ground cards. And they just can continuously stack up, okay? But obviously, you're gonna want more than just one ground card. You can have 10, 10 stacks of ground cards. So you can have 10 ground cards, and then you can have cards that go on top of the ground cards in each of the 10, basically, columns of ground cards. And there are other types of, obviously, uh, ground cards that have different icons on them, like this one's got a tree icon, for instance, while it still has the same icon as this. Um, uh, this one is obviously different from the other two, for instance, as in this has a different type of icon, kind of like a rock type of terrain on it. So there's different types of those cards. And the E-Deck is only going to have ground cards. So that's how you get ground cards. You're going to get them from the E-Deck only, okay? So that's, that's ground cards. And that's obviously what you start with a ground card. Then there's also observation cards. Now the observation cards are mostly going to be in either the S-Deck or the North Deck. Most of them are going to be are going to be observation cards, and observation cards can only go on top of ground cards. So, for instance, you can't create a separate column with this as the bottom card because this always has to go on top of a ground card. But obviously, it cannot go on that ground card because it requires two icons, which I don't have. Okay, so that's how that's going to work there. Um, and then there's also landscape cards, which we kind of mentioned earlier, which go with these road tokens. Then there are, so the, the West deck is going to have landscape cards in them, but it's also going to have these kinds of cards in them as well. They're kind of like um, special items, that kind of thing. And they're going to also be a, their type of card as well. Um, I forget exactly what kind of card they are. Let me look real quick. I think they're called Discovery Cards. Yes, they're called Discovery Cards. So these Discovery Cards will go on top of Landscape Cards. So if you already have a Landscape Card in your Meadow, then, for instance, when you play a card, you could, could if, you, if this was one of your Discovery Cards, it could go on top of your Landscape Card because this is what you need. Do you need this requirement here, which you have right here? And obviously, this landscape requires a road icon. But there might be some other requirements as well that you'll need besides just this, okay? But yes, you can place it on top of your landscape cards. So those are two different types of cards that are considered uh, considered um, that that are going to be in the West deck. You're going to have landscape and you're going to have discovery cards in there. You also might have some observation cards in the West deck. For instance, this fence looking thing, well, it has a fence icon on it, but it looks sort of like a storage shed. This is an observation card that you can acquire from the West deck. So house icons and fence icons are going to be in the West deck as well. So here's, for instance, a house icon which is going to be in the West deck. That's how you're going to get house icons and fence icons from those, from that deck, from the West deck. That's how that works. Um, okay, um, so those are the different types of cards that you'll come across, obviously. So now that we've talked about the different types of cards, we've talked about the actions, let's talk about how to play a card and that kind of thing. So first of all, Let's say I wanted to play a card from my hand. Let's say I wanted to play this card here. You'll notice this butterfly icon here requires a grub and a grassland. So on my turn, I could place it on top of this card here, for instance, scoring me points. Okay, that's how you get that. Now, Obviously, you're going to need multiples of these types of icons and berries and birds and other types of icons and trees and stuff like that, because as you get 
more victory points, because these are victory points here, they're going to get more expensive and harder to play. But when you place this type of card, it can either go, not only do you need to have the requirements, which we do have here, but it can go onto a different card. So for instance, if I also had this card here, I could place it on this one, or I could place it on this one, because they both have the requirement that one of the requirements that I re require. Now I need to have both of the requirements for this card to play it, but I can place that on any one that satisfies it at least one of its needs to play it, okay? So for instance, I could do that, because that would work. But of course, I'd be covering up the tree icon. Maybe I want that tree icon for something better. You never know. But yes, that's how that would work. So you can play multiple ground cards, and you can continuously cover up stuff with that you might have. This one has the paw print on it for the, the vole here, but I also would need uh, something with this bug icon on it as well. And uh, this ground card here happens to have that bug icon. So then I'd also have to have this in my tableau, basically, to be able to play this. I have got that grub, and I've got this icon, so I could place it on this one, or I could place it on, for instance, this one as well. So let's say I placed it on, oh, I don't know, that one. That would work, okay? So that's how that's kind of gonna work. Obviously, we've got another ground card here that I could place that uh, has that tree icon on it. So basically, you wanna meet the requirement, you're gonna need to meet the requirements of all of the cards that you're playing, okay? That's basically how things are gonna work there. Um, let's see, that was there. And this one was there, I think. So, that's how you're going to play cards. You're going to have to cover up icons, um, obviously, and you're going to need certain, you know, certain things. Now, this one needs two types of ground cards that are kind of like a wetland. And um, if at any time in the game you can't meet both requirements or multiple requirements, you can also, as an option, discard two cards that you don't think you're going to use anyway to ignore one requirement. So for instance, if I had just one wetland and I discarded two cards, I could cover up just this one here and, and ignore it and play it anyway. But, but I can't, I can never, I can never cover up both. I could never ignore both requirements. I must have at least one requirement for each card to, that I could potentially ignore. So that's another option that you could do Although, it's honestly really hard to get these cards. So you're not going to do that too often, probably. But that's another potential way of playing cards that are going to give you victory points and things like that into your meadow. Um, and then obviously, you know, when you're getting halfway through the deck, we'll have access to these better cards that require more icons and have the cooler animals and give you more victory points and stuff like that. But then there is one other thing that I can mention as well. There's something else going on with this campfire. So let's move it a little closer so we can show you. So this meadow, this, I mean, this campfire has several different icons on them. Uh, whenever you have two of the icons that are next to each other. So let's say if I had the wolf icon and this bird icon, in my meadow, then I could put my lowest scoring token, basically here, indicating that I have both of them in my tableau. Now, when you do that, is when you take the action that allows you to basically, so if you take this action here, placing it on the campfire, then before you play these two cards, and you, and you have the icons in your meadow, then you can put the token there to indicate you got it. You can also do it between the two that you play, and you can also do it after the two cards you play, if you have it then. So that's how you can do it. That's the only way you're gonna get these on there is when you're taking that particular action. And obviously you'd have to have both icons in your meadow to get them. But that's basically everything you need to know in order to play meadow. I think I explained it pretty well. I think that should work.
everything you may need to know about playing the game. And um, obviously the player who has the most victory points wins the game. So thank you guys for watching this video and I'll see you guys again next time. Don't forget to leave me a like if you guys like this how to play video. Bye.